Amen. Anybody here worried about the snowball that's up here? Yeah, you're looking at that thinking, am I going to get one thrown at me? I don't know. Anybody? Never mind. So <laughs> be able to do that. Christmas Eve, how many of you are making last-minute preparations? Anybody? You all done? You got it? Nope. All right. I didn't think so. How many of you got a couple of more food items to go get? A couple of more gifts. I, you know, really, the first time ever in my life, I was sitting there and I went, I forgot to buy a gift for someone. And I don't know why I did that. I was just there Friday and I'm sitting there and I'm going, oh no, this is not good. And so, yeah, in the car, let's go. Then you go, what are you going to get? I haven't a clue. We'll figure it out on the way there. How many of you Christmas shop like that? I don't know what I'm going to get, but when I get there, I'll find it. I'll figure it out. I'll be able to do that. You know, I'm glad Jesus makes it easier for us to be able to find him. Uh, getting those last few get, gifts and uh, items from the grocery store, it's going to be Publix was a madhouse. <laughs> Bless you if you got to go uh, to be able to do that. But I want to take a few moments to share some truth about Christmas here today with you. And also, this is, I said it was going to be an interactive sermon. So I need you all to take your phones out. Okay, you need to take your phones out, open up your text messages, your SMS, your text messages, whatever the case is. Uh, Pastor Betty, you need my phone, and it's up here, and you're not there. You're going to use that one? Okay, you're going to use, <laughs> oh, this ought to be fun, uh, to be able to do that. My phone's connected to her iPad. I can't say anything without her knowing it. <laughs> so uh, some of you are thinking, all the wives in here are going, ooh, can I do that with my husband's phone? I just started a dozen fights, and I'm so sorry to be able to do that. I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to take some polls here this morning uh, about Christmas, and I would like to have your input on that. And so if you guys will go ahead and put up that first one here, uh, there's my phone number, so you want to go ahead and punch that in. And uh, I want to know, what do you, do you believe to be the most, no, that's not the first question, guys. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> and the head of the tech department just passed out laughing, uh, there in the back. We will be getting to that one in a minute, but that's not the one that I want to. I'll go ahead and say it. When do you start decorating? When do you start decorating for Christmas? Online, do the same thing. Go ahead and text your answers in uh, the day before Christmas, you know, 1st of December, the day after Thanksgiving, the beginning of October, I don't know, some people are, are I know, or I, uh, messages are coming in, so light them up. We're going to be, I, at the end of the service, I'll give you the answers. So when we get to the end, you're not, you're not, I'm not going to leave you out, but I'll be able to do that. But go ahead and just go ahead and send those answers in while I continue here for a few moments. We're going to conclude our series called Glorify. And it's all about worship. I mean, you know, Christmas and worship go hand in hand. If you want to enjoy Christmas, worship. If you can't worship, you're never going to get Christmas. It just doesn't work that way. We walked through Luke and Matthew our first week and discovered that people's first reaction to the announcement of Jesus' birth or to the arrival of Jesus was worship. Everybody wanted to worship. Mary being, the, the mother of Jesus being the one that was most, most worshipful. And the word there was glorify or magnify God there in, in, in her uh, script, there in the scripture, her song called the Magnificat. And there she poured out everything. And, there it, and to glorify means to make, make massive, to make huge, to make big, to make wow. She wasn't just, oh, wow, you know, Jesus is coming. She was like the king of kings, the Lord of lords. The one who reigns over the universe is coming. He's arriving. The Savior is here. He has kept his word all the way from Abraham, all the way back to the Garden of Eden to now. It has come to life, and Jesus Christ is coming. Okay, so, you know, when you've got this young woman going around glorifying God, people are going, what in the world is happening? And she's pregnant and she's not married, and that's a whole other sermon, and, and everything that's going on through, through all of this. She worshiped God and said, thank you for, for, for changing my life in what you're doing in and through me. Last week we followed the wise man who saw the glory of God and made the personal sacrifice to worship Jesus coming over 850 miles just to be able to worship him while the religious leaders who are only four and a half miles away couldn't even find Jesus unless they were able to go to the scripture 
we discovered that how we can steal our joy out of our worship from ourselves. We can ruin our worship. You can do it. I don't understand why. you got to be able to understand that you have to come to a place where you worship him without reservation. To be able to worship him and, and not destroy yourself. The, uh, um, i got to turn, hang on, i got to turn the volume down on my iPad. The, uh, down, boom, 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 boom. So it, it's going on. And if you want to see the message, you can go to our YouTube channel. I, I posted it there Thursday. And so, Betty, turn your volume down for crying out loud. Keep working on it. There's a button on the side that says stop it. Uh, I want you to turn your attention to worship again by asking you the, this question. Are you satisfied with Christmas? Are you satisfied with Christmas? Mm. Christmas is a reminder that this season is supposed to be happy. Right? I mean, listen to the songs that you have been going through in the shopping. And I've been listening. I've been listening to the music. I've been listening to the speakers. You know, everywhere that I go, what are they playing on, you know, in the stores as you go there? It's the most wonderful time of the year. Okay, there you go. And have a holly. Ah, there we go. Chestnuts. <laughs> Jingle bells, and that was written for Thanksgiving, not Christmas. Just one, once you know, walking in, a yeah, all of this. It's all about being happy, and it's all about being wonderful. You know, all all of these things that are happening, and and, and we see all this, and it screams that Christmas time is supposed to be joyous and trouble free. And none of them have ever drove on I-95. Anybody who says that whatsoever, it's just, you've got to be kidding me, right? By the way, number one, worst place, drive in the country, I-4, Orlando. So uh, that uh, just came out this past week. It surpassed even Los Angeles. I don't know how. But, but anyhow, for some of you, personal problems, health problems, family, marriage problems have kept you from experiencing his joy. I mean, life has just been overwhelming. And, and a large part of that sometimes is that we make it overwhelming. We, we, take, we take molehills and turn them into mountains. And nobody ever, I mean, yeah, come on, be honest with you. You blow yourself up. You overthink it. But we have. We do experience those things that challenge our joy. And it just challenges the joy that we can experience during this season. There may be nothing wrong with some of you. It's true. There may be nothing wrong with you whatsoever. But you're just not enjoying this for some reason. I mean, it's just, eh. There's no emotional lift. There, in fact, it's kind of maybe a little depressing during this time. And the world doesn't look like a winter wonderland to you. It just looks like winter, you know. Mm. Or a version of winter in Florida. Disillusionment at Christmas is not an unusual thing. I want, you, I want to say all that just to tell you. If you're disillusioned during this time of the year, you're probably normal. You're just probably going through life. And trying to experience something during this particular time of the year may not be something you're able to do. We get so excited with expectations that often the real thing doesn't measure up and we end up being disappointed. We just, just this didn't work out. We get some news and, Life is going to happen, and, and we go, well, better luck next year, huh? Now, have you ever been disappointed with Jesus? Don't say no. Don't do it. I know, I know the truth. I already know the answer to that question, the true answer to the question. Yeah, we get disappointed sometimes. We look at him and go, really? Is that what, are you kidding me? This was not supposed to turn out this way. Come on, you were in this. What was going on? What happened? We can become disillusioned with Christ. We can become disillusioned with, with worship. And, and when we're disillusioned with Jesus, it automatically just puts a, puts a dent in our worship whenever we try to get closer to him. So I want to go to Matthew, back to Matthew chapter 2, 1 through 5, in there in that passage of Scripture where the wise men are, are coming and arriving in Jerusalem, and we went through all of that last Sunday. But 
whenever we, we look to Christmas, what are we looking for? I mean, really, what are we looking for? Some tradition? Are we looking for a feeling? Are we looking for that favorite dish that, that we can only get that one time a year? You know, that's the only time they'll make it because it's so hard to make, and that's the only good excuse you can come up with that. So uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we've come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, and when everyone, as was everyone in Jerusalem, he, was, he called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers and religious laws and, and, and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea. What do you seek? Okay? What do you seek during the Christmas time? All right, let's go ahead and put up that next poll uh, here, Rick. What do you believe to be the most desired Christmas gift this year? What is the one, number one gift everybody wants this year? Okay? What is it? Go ahead, lock in your answers, vote, do whatever you want to do at this point in time. I'll tell you about it in a little while. Your level of joy is direct, directly related to what you seek. Let me say that one more time. Your level of joy is directly related to what you seek. Whatever you're looking for, that's what you're going to find. Okay? And so, I turned all these down. What now? The, uh, um, <coughs> stop, stop. Thank you. All right. And then Siri started talking to me up here, and I didn't ask for that. And I'm like, really? So, whatever you're looking for, that's what you're going to find. If you're just trashing Christmas, you're just going to find a trashy Christmas. If, 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 you're, if you're trashing your family or marriage, guess what? If you're, if you're speaking ill of 2024, which is a real popular thing to do right now, I really need you to put the brakes on that and back that truck up real fast. Because you're, you're going to reap what you sow. That's a biblical thing. So I want you to know that whenever you look at this and, and you begin to, to see what God is doing in your heart, in your life, you have to ask yourself, what am I looking for? What is it that would make your Christmas wonderful and satisfying? Snow? In South Florida, we would call that the apocalypse, just in case you're wondering. For my people out of town are like, oh, we got snow here. Great for you. It would be the end of the world here around here for us if we got snow. Uh, the, the bad, bad news. And, and so is it snow? Is it uh, bringing your family together and being happy? Is it uh, a feeling? You're looking for that feeling maybe that you had as a kid whenever you would go over to grandma's house or whatever the case is. Finding that right present to give. Just finding that one present that when you hand it to them, they light up like a Christmas tree, right? Or getting that present you've been hoping for. Oh, y'all got one. There's something running in through your head, you know, you want know, something you want for Christmas. I get it. These can leave us disappointed because oftentimes... It doesn't happen. It's just hmm, kind of, you know, a roll of dice. The problem is our expectations. We're looking for the wrong thing in our lives. Seek a fresh experience with Jesus at Christmas. Seek a, a fresh experience from him and a new glimpse of his grace and his mercy. That's what is the gift that you can have today, that you can give yourself right now, is that, you know what, the, my past and everything that, I've, that I have just been, I have looked at God and I liked him very much, and, um, and, and his followers are idiots. You know, there's a few, yes, we, we get that. But, and, and, but you know what, God, I, I would just... A fresh glimpse, a, a new, a new, a new face to put on my faith, to understand you, to know you more. If our goal this Christmas is to worship Jesus, then I doubt very seriously we're going to be dissatisfied with the experience. I'm just going to worship you, Lord. 
and honor you. And by the way, you don't have to go in debt to do that. All the parents said amen. Okay, wh where do you look? Where do you look? Let's put up the next question. Where are people going for Christmas this year? Where are people going for Christmas this year? Okay, so I want you to go ahead and start locking in your answers for that one. Where do you think people are going for Christmas this year? What do you think that number one thing is? Your level of joy at Christmas is directly related to where you look. Okay? Your level of joy is, re is directly related to where you look. And whenever you find out the answer to this one, you're going to be thinking people are, have, are looking in the wrong place. But I'll tell you that at the end of the service. The fact of the matter is, is that whatever you're looking at, that's what you're going to find. That's the way your brain is trained. Didn't you know that? You've, heard, you've seen me do this illustration before. Red Toyotas. Now you're going to see a red Toyota today. I guarantee it. You're going to see one and go, mm, pastor's right. Because we will find what we're looking for. If you're looking for destruction, you'll find it. If you're looking for death, you will find it. If you're looking for sadness, you will find it. If you're looking for joy, you will find it. If you're looking for love from God, you will find it. And so on this day, look for what God has in store for you. The wise men started by looking in the absolute worst wrong place they could go. Because in their human reasoning, they thought, well, if there is a king being born, we probably should go to the capital city, Jerusalem, and we should go to the palace of the king, King Herod. It made sense to them. That's where they would find, and that was a mistake. Ooh, bad, bad mistake whenever that came out. Are you looking in the wrong places for joy? Will you be satisfied by getting or giving the right gift? We imagine that, that being with family would be joyful. Some family. Yeah, some of you are looking at me going, oh, he, he knows some people in my family. Y'all, we all got one. You might be it, too. If you're by yourself, you might be the one. I'm just saying. Okay. <clears throat> we can be easily disappointed. It's, it's easy for us to be. How many of you been, have been disappointed before, right? So we can be disappointed if we allow ourselves to be focused on a wrong thing. The wise men started looking in the right place whenever they started looking for God. And I suspect some of you might have got, uh, might have been uh, scolded a little bit for coming to church today. It's Christmas Eve. Why are you going to church? Well, it might be the place where we worship the Savior, the King that was born, that we recognize on this particular day, and, and, and uh, we would like to go and worship Him and thank Him for coming as a child so that we would be saved from our sins. I don't know. That just makes sense to me. How, how about you? Amen? And uh, I know a lot of people are traveling and they're out and all the rest of it, and probably some are online. God bless you. Enjoy your vacation. Come home. Uh, just, just saying. The trip to Jerusalem wasn't a total loss. They said, well, where is he? And they said, well, the scripture says he should be in Bethlehem about four and a half miles away. Where are you looking for God? Are you looking for God in your problems? Are you looking for God in your circumstances, in your relationships, in your emotions? Are you looking for God in those places? Or are you looking for him in your worship? Because he'll show up in your worship. Every time. Hallelujah. He'll be there for you every time. What do you give at Christmas? What do you give? All right, here's the third and last question I'm going to ask. What is the number one most reoccurring gift given each year? What is the number one most reoccurring gift given each year? Every year, this one shows up. Every time. And you know it. I know you know it. I don't know if you'll guess it, but I do know you know it. Your level of joy at Christmas is directly related to what you give. Your, your level of joy is directly related to what you give. If you give nothing, you get nothing. So if you don't give joy, you don't. Okay, you see how this works. The wise men came to Jesus bearing appropriate gifts. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. Gold for a king, frankincense for a priest. Myrrh, a gift for death. Well, what should you and I be giving this year? Number one, love. We love one another. The love of Jesus that's in here. 
Love without Christ is just a random act of kindness. Let me say it again. Love without Christ is just a random act of kindness. Anybody can do that. Love with the purpose from Christ is what changes us, and it also changes the person whom we love. And that's hard because some people are not making it very easy to be lovable. That's why we'll get to number three for them in a moment. But show somebody love and appreciation. God created them. God loves them. Jesus died for them, rose again. And he wants them to spend eternity with him in heaven forevermore. And you, you are the example. You're the, you're the message that that is true. Number two, accept people who are hurting. Accept people. Accept them. They're hurting. You say, I don't know any hurting people. You're in a room full of them. There's a ton of them online. We're surrounded with hurting people. And, and if you try to fix them all at the same time, you're going to get a little bit overwhelmed. So let me just give you a word of wisdom here. Just work with the ones that God puts in front of you. Just, just work with them. And, and again, their pain is great. And we tend to ignore people's pain because it requires us to give. But the gift of caring must be made real. We, 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 we've got to make that a reality. I don't have anything to give. You've got time. You've got a set of ears that can listen. I don't have any answers. You don't need any. That's not the point. Caring people are just there and encouraging. Can you encourage someone? Can, can you just be in, can, maybe not. Okay. Can, uh, can, you, can you be encouraging? Uh-huh. Hello. Amen. All right, good. Number three is Forgiveness. Forgive those who have hurt us this year. People hurt us. We got hurt. Expectations failed. Disappointment caused much pain. And we can be embroiled in all of that suffering. Disappointment. And we have to come to a place where we forgive them. Day after day, we forgive them. These kind of gifts will result in a joyous and meaningful Christmas. These kind of gifts make Christmas real. Because Jesus loves you. Jesus accepts you. And Jesus forgives you. That's his gift to you. And the reason why we give gifts to each other to show our love and our acceptance and even our forgiveness. What are you what are you giving for Christmas this year? You got gifts, you got time, you got all sorts of things. But really, what are you giving? Really, what are you giving? There's a part of Christmas that is, it's kind of got this facade. It's this lacquer we put over the top of it, make it look bright and shiny. But underneath, it's just us. The real us. The person that we probably don't let come out and play too often because it's a little messed up. Broken. It's not perfect. It's, it's not acceptable. And, and over the course of the last year, but especially in the last few months, I've seen people being canceled, hurt, disowned for no good reason other than the fact that someone's selfishness in their expectations said, you didn't do this this way. You didn't do this right. You didn't do that right. And I, you're gone. Goodbye. I don't need you. We come to a Christmas 
where we remember that Jesus wasn't wanted. Oh yeah, mom and dad wanted him. And the angels sang about him and the shepherds proclaimed him and the wise men came and found him and Herod wanted to cancel him. And he had to run away until times were better. We understand this. We understand what Jesus went through. He understands what you're going through. He understands what we're going through as a culture. And the thing about this, this particular season, every year I always say, try to say something. Try to find something. What about this year has been different from all of the other Christmases? And, and honestly, this one is the joy in saying Merry Christmas. How many years have we been told, don't say it, don't say it, that's wrong, don't say Merry Christmas, don't say Merry Christmas. Now I've been over for the last few weeks going, Merry Christmas, and people have been lighting up. Yes, it is. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. People, in this coming year, I, I think people want to return back to what worked. I think the world will do everything to distract you from doing it. But I hear the people's hearts cry. I want my Christmas back. The real one. The one about Jesus. The one where we read the stories and we saw the nativities and we understood Jesus for who he was and what he was doing for us in that moment. Why not give your mercy, your compassion, your love, your joy? Stand with me if you would, please. Why not give your heart to Jesus? Why not? Why not give everything to him right here? Whether you know Christ, have known Christ, hey, that's great, that's wonderful. Why not just go ahead and give him your heart right now? You say, well, and, and, and some of you, maybe you've been like, well, you know, I'm kind of held back and everything else. How's that going for you? Lousy. That's how it's going for you. Because when you're by yourself, when you're truth to yourself, when you're not telling yourself lies, it hurts. Life hurts. Sin isn't fair. Life isn't fair. But Jesus came to say, I will intervene. I'll bring joy. And I'll be with you as you walk through life. I will not leave you, Jesus said. I will not give up on you, he said. And he hasn't, and he will not start with you. But give him everything. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Just for a moment, I want you to take this time. If you're online, you can join us too, but I want you to know today the greatest gift you can give is your heart to Jesus. That's the number one gift. That's the gift of all time. That's the gift that changes time and eternity. That's the gift that gives hope. That's the gift that restores joy. That's the gift that matters. You're here today. And you say, I want to give my heart, all of my heart. I don't want to hold back. I just want Jesus in. You're not joining this church. You're not joining a religion. That's None of that's going on here. It's you and Jesus, just you and him right now. And you want to know him and ask him into your heart and say, yeah, that's me. You can raise your hand and say, yes, pastor, pray for me. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. And if you're uncomfortable with that, just make eye contact with me. I'll see you. Thank you. Thank you. This is between you and Christ. You're starting something. I want you to continue to do it. I want you to be a part of, you know, we're just getting started. This isn't the end of the story. This is the beginning. Just like Christmas is the beginning of the story. It's not the end. The manger is empty. The baby grew up. And he's listening to you right now. 
for everybody here, everybody online. I'm going to lead you in prayer. And I want you just, the, the words don't save you. It's your heart. The fact you raised your hand, the fact you made eye contact with me, that's what matters right now more than ever. That you give it all to him. So everybody pray. Everybody together. Father in heaven, I give my heart to you. I need you. Now more than ever, I'm asking for a relationship with you that makes me to be more like you. Show me your will and your ways. Forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner and I need you. And you are the Son of God who died on a cross, rose from the grave, and is listening to me right now. I give you my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody praise God in his house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, all right, hang on line. I'm going to give you the poll. Go ahead and sit down if you want. We'll bless you in a minute. Let me see how this went. Wow. So, when do you start decorating? Well, let's see. Number one answer is the day after Thanksgiving. Overwhelmingly. Uh, some of you um, are Scrooges. You do not at all. Um, I'm one of them. I didn't either, so it's okay. Um, somebody says, when I put up my tree. That might be February, for all I know. You might want to get a jump. Okay, number one gift. Uh, let's see. Number one answer, peace. Did, okay. Um, a Stanley mug. That came in second. Uh, number one gift that is given, money. Money is the number one gift. Somebody got that one right. All right, nearly 85. Oh, no, let me say number one. Number one. Uh, um, wow, nobody got this one. All right, number one place people go for Christmas is Orlando. Number two, London. 85% of all Americans Avoid their family at the holidays. <laughs> what was your number one answer? To see family. You're not normal. Oh. Mm. <laughs> okay. And then number three was the most reoccurring gift. Um, I'm looking through here. One of you got it right. Wow. That's that's pretty cool. Um Looking at this, yeah, that one might fit in. Anyhow, number one, most reoccurring gift, chocolate. You get chocolate every year. Come on. I've got chocolate to give away. Anybody want chocolate? I'll give you chocolate. Number two, something homemade. Anybody get homemade gifts? Yeah, that's a number two gift that's given every year. Number three is money uh, to be able to do that. So anyhow, thank you for participating. That's pretty cool. I enjoyed that very, very much. How many of you thinking you're not going to Orlando for Christmas? Guess where my daughter wants to go this week? Jesus, help me. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless. Merry Christmas.